Good afternoon. My name is Travis Garrett and I'll be presenting the case Leadership Metal Forged in Battle, in which we're going to discuss how military traits can be used in organizational leadership. So, for the background of our case, in 2008 there was a shortage in leadership ready employees at management level for stores across America. And so Walmart decided to try and start a new theory and a new idea in which they were going to hire 500 junior military officers to train for a branch management role at different locations across the nation. And what they found is that they were very successful with how the traits correlated with business management at Walmart and for the organization. And so what many different organizations decided to do was to start implementing this and start also trying to train out military leaders to see the benefits that they could also get within their organization. And now Walmart claims that they have world-class leaders because of this military program that they've put together. And so now we want to analyze, do military leaders actually have traits that can apply and what are they? And so for the core values that the military implements, there's seven, and they have it listed within their creed. It's the seven U.S. military core values. The first one is loyalty. And the Army defines loyalty as a matter of being devoted and believing you're in one or someone or something. And so the second is duty. The duty value is described as being able to accomplish a task at hand, whether on a team or individually. The third value is respect, and for respect, this is a big thing within the military. They define respect as trusting that all people have done their jobs and will fulfill them to their best, to their best ability. Next, we have uh, selfless service, and so selfless service is defined as maximizing one's effort without regards to one's self-benefit. This is something that they really harp on in the military to devote themselves to an objective, but not necessarily to a um, benefit to their self, but to a benefit for the entire organization. And so uh, moving forward, the fifth core value is honor, which honor is the belief that you carry out your actions throughout everyday living habits in an honorable, good, moral, valued way. The sixth is integrity. Integrity is defined as doing what is right when no one else is watching. And so the military believes this is a good value to have because you don't need to always do things right when everybody's watching, but also when they're not watching. And when you don't have eyes on you, are you still doing the correct and proper things? And then the last one we have is personal courage. And so personal courage is defined as acting upon things that are honorable. This really goes along with the integrity model because personal courage, you have to have it within you to be able to do what is right and do things that are honorable. So next, let's decipher out of these core values, which ones can we actually use in an organizational leadership role? And so to do this, first analyzing loyalty, we have that uh, leaders have to show loyalty to their unit because that way they can reciprocate that. Their employees will reciprocate the loyalty um, to the program, to the projects, to the organization as a whole. Next, in duty, we have that uh, leaders will have to stay, will have to be able to complete their task as employees do. So it's important for a leader in an organization to show their employees that they also have the knowledge and the ability to do the ground level work and aren't just managing over the top. They can also perform these duties as well. The next one is respect. And along with the military, respect within an organization is very detrimental to a organization's success because if you're not respecting who you're working for, what your job is, what goal your organization has, you can't possibly be successful and move the company forward. The next one is selfless service. And so with selfless service, um, 
what an organizational leader needs to do is to be able to lead by example. Give give your employees an example of uh, selfless service so that they can also reciprocate it and that the public knows selfless service is the organization's goal and it's the culture of the organization so they can move forward in, um, in giving a good public relation and a good public view. Um, next is honor and when honor we can implement this in organizational leaders because organizational leaders need to be accountable for their actions and they need to do honorable things so that they can gain the respect of not only their employees but the public as well. Um, integrity goes very well and is very similar with honor in that really we need to be doing things eth ethically and so organizational leaders need to make sure that all of their decisions not only are based on the ultimate result of the organization and the performance of the business, but is it ethical? Is it the best way and the best thing to do, not only for themselves, but for the environment, for um, the public as in general? Um, so our next and last core value that we can also implement um, to organizational leaders is personal courage. And personal courage needs to be used um, from an organizational leadership standpoint because you need to also lead by action and show that um, your employees the direct path on what they need to do going forward and that will also gain the respect of your employees. Um, for our next question we have presented in the case we're going to look and see how um, what ways leadership lessons learned in the military may not actually apply. So we have a good core value of traits, but now let's see what may actually not be implemented in an organizational private sector um, that may not benefit. And so the first one we have is uh, tactical um, forces, which we're going to focus more so on the physicality side. And so leadership or leaders in the military usually have a sense of a brute force behind their actions and their tactical strategy. Um, so they can be seen as good fighting leaders and that's not necessarily the case in an organizational leadership role because brute force sometimes is not seen as the best way to do things in an organization in the private sector. So next we're going to talk about the warlike mentality. So leaders in the military have a, a sense of a warlike mentality and that they're always, not always, but Sometimes to complete their task, they have to destroy the enemy. And that's not necessarily the case in organization and business because sometimes having competitors and having um, different organizations that you're competing against are a good thing for your organization to be able to grow and benefit and gain other ideas within the market. And so this warlike mentality may not actually need to be used in an organization because it doesn't need to be as cutthroat. Um, and then the last one we're going to discuss is living amongst, amongst uh, your troops. And so the leaders in the military, from day to day, they're bunking with their organizational unit. They're bunking with their um, units and they're uh, fighting with their coworkers. So they're always bonded between each other. And it's a very, very tight family knit organizational view of how the military units work. And so um, this is not always the case with a, a private sector organization because you may not be as close with um, other individuals within your sector. So you may have to find different ways to be able to reach out to them. And so they um, will not, um, they'll gain your respect and uh, you won't have to do it in the same way that may be somewhat automatic with living amongst your troops in the military. And so for the next case we have, um, we're going to discuss on how these traits and what actually might have to be relearned to work in a business aspect um, coming from a veteran and a military leader. So the first one I want to point out is the aspects of business. So here we're going to discuss accounting and marketing. And in accounting, laws are changing from year to year, from quarter to quarter, from month to month. So these military leaders, once they come out of their action in combat, they may need to actually relearn and reprocess how these accounting laws actually will apply um, going into their business. 
and that being the same with marketing. Military leaders may not be aware of all of the different social media platforms that they can now access and use for a marketing strategy. So these are some things that need to be relearned going back into a business. And the next one I want to talk about is civil communication. So going back to the brute force that doesn't really apply to an organizational structure, military leaders need to know how to communicate civilly, especially when there's punishment or there's possibly a um, high intensity uh, problem that's going on. They need to know how to manage between certain individuals that might be differently than using a brute force and potentially a violent source of um, orders or giving out punishment. And so the last point we're going to talk about is a mistake is not life or death. Um, this comes into play because not all mistakes made in the organizational business are going to result in lives lost across um, across the nation in, in battle that military leaders usually have to deal with. And so mistakes are okay. It's okay to ask for help. And I think that's something that military leaders will need to kind of relearn and adapt to when coming back into an organizational business. So our last question we have is, uh, what work may best fit a battle-tested leader? For this, I chose coaching and teaching. I think military in the military, you learn a very structured life. You learn a very um, motivational way to accomplish goals in a teamwork setting. And I think that is uh, great for what our kids growing up need to learn. I think that military leaders applying that structure and that motivational courage for young students to be able to accomplish goals is very, very important. Um, I think the next is personal trainer, possibly a fitness instructor. And that's because military leaders see the struggle. They know what it takes. They they know that um, what the struggle benefits them and the outcome. And I think that they can do very well at enforcing that, um, or not enforcing, but implementing that in a personal trainer setting. The last one is law enforcement. Obviously, military um, veterans are going to be very knowledgeable about the usage of weaponry, um, but also abiding by the law and applying the law in certain situations. I feel as if military leaders may be very well at this. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is just going back over the last things that make leaders, make veterans good leaders, and that's going back to the structure talked about before, decisiveness, goal-orientedness, and honor. Um, I believe these are the main traits that veterans have that can make them good organizational leaders. And so finally, our references. These, uh, the information provided to you was found at armymill.com, industryweek.com, and hbr.org. Um, thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.